All right, let's look at the second free response question from the 2021 uh, AP Physics 2 exam. As usual, if I if you guys point out any mistakes, I'll update in the description below for anything that I uh, do wrong here, which is inevitable that one of them will probably, I, I usually am not completely perfect on these questions. Uh, a group of students designed an experiment to investigate the relationship between density and pressure of a sample of gas at constant temperature. The gas may or may not be ideal. They will create a graph of density as a function of pressure. They have the following materials and equipment. A sample of gas known mass mg in a sealed clear cylindrical container is shown above with a movable piston of known mass mp. A collection of objects, each of known mass m0, and a meter stick. Describe measurements the students should take and procedure they could use to collect the data needed to create the graphs. Specifically, indicate how the students could keep the temperature constant. Include enough detail that another student could follow the procedure and obtain similar data. Okay, um, so, and a procedure, that, so basically, if you want to look at the relationship as what, I, ideal gas is PV equals NRT, okay, this is ideal gas law, so they want to look at the, between the density and pressure, so really, when you say density, density is mass over volume, it's really a relationship between volume and pressure, if you so to speak, right, that's, because the mass is, the mass of the gas is constant, so um, really what happens is, as you compress it, you change the volume, you change the density, right, and then you measure the pressure, so they're really looking at a relationship for PV equals NRT, that's the, general relationship they're trying to investigate here and they're trying to decide does this relationship hold or not so they're going to alter the pressure alter the volume or see the observed volume response and then you know and then chart chart that theory uh, presumably describe the measurements students should take so what what should we do is we should vary the pressure that's probably the easiest thing you can do is because you know the mass and the way you can vary the pressure is you just add different pieces of mass onto it as and you squeeze it more and more with known masses and um, you will adjust the amount of force being applied on here as you adjust the force being applied that really changes the pressure right so as you do it it's going to just collapse the volume and the and the pressure you can is it, so it's going to collapse as you put weight on here it's going to collapse and it'll be collapse right when the upward force equals the downward force right the weight is equal to the upward force the upward force due to the pressure of the gas so that's what you're looking that's what's going to do when you did this experiment now how do we keep at constant temperature is we have to let the system settle and you want to you want to have some known way to keep the temperature so let's say we're going to run this experiment in a room and we're going to attempt to keep the room temperature pretty constant you could use that with like heating or cooling but just say like assume and and you just have to because as you're doing work on it it might heat up a little bit you just have to wait a while to let that heat dissipate and so that the air and the temperature and the gas you know reaches room temperature so let's kind of um this is kind of what we're going to do is we're going to place some masses, some mass of M0 on the piston. We are going to then um, um, let the piston fall and wait for temperature to for the temperature to, for a few minutes minute maybe just a minutes for temperature to for temperature of gas to reach room temperature we're then going to measure the height of the piston With, with the meter stick. And then last, we're going to repeat with, repeat um, uh, starting with step, starting at step one. With another mass, with an, an additional M0 and repeat this several times with several masses. 
Okay, that's the basic idea. So we're going to record, and we're going to record this. By measuring the height, you can compute the volume, because if you know the size of this piston, you can calculate the volume from the height, right? It's like the area of the base times the height. Um, specifically indicate that, um, I think I did it in number two, where I said, wait a few minutes for the temperature gas to reach room temperature. Include enough detail. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's pretty good. Determine expression for the absolute pressure of the gas in terms of the measured quantities. Let's let's give some variables um, to some of these. Um, let's see. Let's say. Um, what do I want to do? We're gonna we're gonna call this um, the height h. So let's let's define. Let's h equals the measured height. R equals the radius of the cylinder, and M0 equals the mass. We've, oh, we've already defined what M0 is. So what's going to happen is the pressure, well, so basically on the piston, right, the, what I was saying was that you have to have an equal upward force from the pressure equals the downward force, the gravitational force when you have the M0 on here. So we'd say m0 times g is equal to the upward force which is the pressure times the area that's the pressure times pi r squared um, so the pressure would equal m0 g divided by pi r squared okay yeah because the force of the pressure is pressure uh, force from the pressure is pressure times area and then this is just the the weight of the thing we just assume the I don't know they say the mass of the piston oh they say the the, the piston has a mass so this is uh, m0 plus mp times g sorry I should have uh, so make that include the mass of the piston I was gonna say the piston probably didn't have that much mass but uh, it looks like it does have some mp plus m0 g okay Determine expression for the density of the gas in terms of the measured qu uh, quantity. So density is equal to uh, mass over volume. And we're talking about the mass of the gas here. And what letter do we use for that? Is mg is the gas. And the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times h, where that's the height that we measured. So that would be the density. Okay, um, the graph describes the student's data. Does the, the graph indicate the gas is ideal? Describe application of physics principle and analysis of the graph that can be used to arrive at your answer. So we need an equation that relates pressure versus density. So let's look at, um, let's look at PV equals NRT, right? So pressure is here, that's on the x-axis. And the density, uh, density I'm gonna call D, which is mass over volume. Um, so you could say the volume is equal to MD. So really, um, sorry, not MD. Volume times D equals um, the mass. So this is M over D, right? Just re replace those. So then this equation then becomes P times M over D is equal to NRT. This is a, a constant value. Well, uh, N is a constant, R is, this is a constant value. So what should we expect? Let's say I want pressure on the x-axis. So I'm going to move this to the other side. So I'm going to say um, so pressure is equal to, oh, so I want to solve for density because the density is the y-axis. So I'm going to move the d up. So I'm going to say pm over, d, over nrt is equal to d. So this is our y variable. P is our x variable, and you see the dependency between y and x should be linear. So in an ideal gas, um, density versus pressure should be linear, should have a linear relationship. This graph is not linear. So at higher pressures, it's not linear right around here. So at higher pressures, 
this gas is not ideal. I'd make an argument that it's ideal for about this region, but then around here it starts to taper off. Okay. Another group of students proposed that the relationship between density and pressure could also be obtained by filling a balloon with a gas and submerging an increased depths of a deep pool of water. Why could submerging the pool and increasing depths be useful to determine the relationship between density and pressure gas? So we increase the depth, you're going to increase the pressure on the system. So increasing depth will cause an increase in pressure. And it will um, reduce the volume. As long as you move it slowly enough, the temperature will be constant. So, so basically, as you increase the depth, you're changing both the pressure and the volume, and that's enough to show that relationship. So, and you can graph. You could you could graph this result. Could graph the changing pressure and volume okay uh, you'd have to do it slowly to let to, so you don't do it so fast that the temperature is changing but like um, of the gas because as it's compressing you want it that you want you want to keep the temperature constant so you want the submerge the surrounding water to like keep the gas at a constant temperature okay the balloon is kept underwater in the deep pool by student pushing down the balloon as shown above let VB represent the volume of the inflated balloon let MB represent the mass of just the balloon, not including the gas. Rho G represent the density of the gas in the balloon. And rho W represent the density of water. Derive an expression for the force a student must exert to hold the balloon at rest under water in terms of the quantities given in this part and physical constants. So to do a free body diagram, we have to say, okay, this thing, the, 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 you have the gravity, force of gravity from the balloon and gas. And then you're going to have a you're also going to have a hand force down here to hold it down and then you have a buoyant force from the liquid so let's calculate what each of these are going to be so the force of gravity is going to equal um, the mass of the balloon times gravity plus the um, you would say mg of the gas but we usually represent that as rho g times volume times g I know this is kind of, this is the capital G and this is a subscript G, so it's a little, little confusing there. Okay, that's, that's the, this is the weight of the balloon, this is the weight of the gas. The buoyant force is the surrounding um, uh, water density times the volume of the displaced amount of water times G. And so when you say F hand, plus Fg is equal to Fb, and you solve for the hand force. Okay, because the net force is zero, right? Because so the downward force is equal to upward forces. So this is Fb minus Fg, and the buoyant force is rho Wvg minus Mbg minus rho Gvg. And um, it requires me to know the volume. Oh yeah, uh, so Vb. That's what they want to call the volume, and I would leave it like that. Honestly, you could co you could combine these if you want. You could factor out a G, I guess, and make it, you know, I don't know, VB times rho W minus rho G minus MB. But honestly, it doesn't really matter that much if you factor that or not. Okay.